welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's show is a compilation of extremely terrifying encounters and experiences that have made our witnesses question their faith and possibly the very fabric of reality. As ever, a huge thank you to each and every witness that has allowed me to narrate their experience on the show. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help with the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into the first experience from Dusty Vex, entitled Dogman in Deerbrook, Wisconsin. Let's get straight into that. Hey DMT, it's Dusty. This is my first time going public about this encounter. I had a fear of seeing it again. Now, this took place roughly 14 years ago. When I was a kid, my family moved out of the city and moved to a small town called Deerbrook, situated on the outskirts of Antigua, Wisconsin. Our house was surrounded by woods on three sides and a river and a field in the back. Now, the first year out there was really calm and relaxing, other than constant coyote howls every night. But every so often, there would be a different howl. It was a deeper, much louder howl that would shake us to our core. At first, my parents would dismiss this as a wolf or just a bigger coyote. But something about it seemed off. One night in mid-July, my brother, my sister and I decided to pitch a tent in the backfield along the tree line. We just wanted to go or camping, i.e., we sat with sticks roasting our marshmallows till it got really dark, and then the typical howls started up. But once again, that deep howl was back, and it sounded like it was right in our ears. With how loud it was, it's hard even to guess where it was coming from, and so we decided to put our fire out and get in the tent. Later that night, my sister fell asleep, so my brother and I chatted and made jokes. Within minutes, we heard animals running around outside the tent, and then this little raccoon started to claw at the side of the tent that I was sleeping on. At first, I kept just poking at it, but then we heard something else. The crack of sticks from the trees. At that point, my brother thought it was a bear and told us to be quiet and woke my sister up. We started to hear footsteps coming closer and closer. And pretty quick, they were right next to me. The raccoon... <laughs> it just bolted out of there. And then we started to have this strange odour coming in from somewhere. It smelled like copper, sulphur and wet dog. It was almost overpowering and made me want to puke. Then we hear our mum calling us. As she shined a flashlight on us. It revealed the most unsettling thing I have ever seen. The shadow of this thing was shining through our tent and it was massive. It had pointed ears that were tilted back like a dog on the prowl, and its hands, or well, they were human looking, with long fingers that ended in a point. The mouth was in the shape of a snout just a little shorter, and it had a mid-sized tail. My mum started screaming and whatever that thing was, brought it back into the woods. We rushed inside with our mum, and didn't go back out for a few days. Now fast forward a few months, I was in the living room with my mum while my sister was in the shower. We were watching Wheel of Fortune or something like that, when my sister screamed bloody murder. My mum jumped up and went to go get her, and she pulled her out of the bathroom, and I got curious as to why she was freaking out. And so I went in to see. Above the shower, we had one of those super small windows that only a small head could fit through, and in the window was a set of red glowing eyes staring down at me. We stared at each other for what felt like a decade. I didn't feel fear, more just like curiosity, and I didn't feel like I was in danger at the time. And as my mum came in to then pull me out, the eyes turned away as well. Well, the rest of the night was quiet after that, 
A few days later, my brother came back from his dad's. Him and I had bunk beds, so I always took the bottom bunk. That night was kind of a gloomy night. It wasn't real windy, but it was drizzling a little bit. Later in the night, my brother and I got woken up to the window being opened. It was locked beforehand by the way. After that, we just closed it and went back to bed. It happened again and again, like three more times. Each time we just locked it. But the final time, it was the worst. It flung open so hard that the glass shattered and the thing we saw was what pushed it open. That same hand from the tent, but I can see it clearly now. It had matted black fur, or hair rather, covering its whole arm. The skin on its palms was a light tan. And the claws were about five to six inches long. And on the bottom of the window, I saw its face or what was showing. It was just the eyes, glowing bright red. They looked like the embers of a roaring fire. My brother and I bolted up, grabbed my sister, and locked ourselves in the back gaming room. We stayed there for the rest of the night, and when my mum came home, we told her, and we packed our things. We actually moved out of that house in a day and took what we could fit, filling one car and a U-Haul. My stepdad's truck was full as well, and we left, never to return again. And to this day, my family is scared to talk about it, but if my brother and I have a few drinks, we discuss it. But my mum just shuts down whenever it's brought up. Thanks for your time. Regards, Dusty. Now what's interesting with this quite a terrifying couple of uh, encounters with this uh, creature is that during the uh, comments after Dusty posted this on Reddit, another Redditor pointed out the fact that um, Dusty mentions in his third or second encounter that when he locked eyes with the creature, he didn't feel fear. Now the other Redditor actually asked Dusty in the comments if he has any Native American bloodline in his family. And it actually turns out that he's actually fifth generation. He notes to the other Redditor that when his brother actually saw the Dogman and locked eyes with it, he felt fear, like his life was in danger and his time was almost up. Whereas Dusty already described that he felt no fear. It was almost as if the Dogman was trying to communicate with him. What's interesting about that is that Dusty, as I mentioned, is a fifth generation bloodline of Native American heritage, whereas his brother is not. Let us know what you guys think about that tidbit of uh, information, but it's certainly not the first time we've heard a factor of heritage having a karma reaction or experience with these creatures. Big thank you to Dusty once again. Really, really did enjoy that. This next experience has uh, been posted by NatSpy1976 over on Reddit. And uh, we're actually going to take you back to her first experience. Some of you may or may not have heard this before, but uh, I certainly thought it was worth bringing up again before we get into her latest reports. And this was simply entitled, My Experience. Let's get straight into that. A little background on me. And that day, well, I work in real estate, more exactly commercial real estate. And so my work takes me all over the place from urban industrial areas to very off the beaten path, secluded areas, farmlands, development lands, etc. On this day in particular, in October of 212, my last assignment of the day was to go out and survey an old farmstead near Cayuga in Haudemont County, about 30 miles south of Hamilton, Ontario. Now the place had been vacant since the 90s. I arrived in a late afternoon, I'd say about 5.30ish. The place was the last one on the dead end country road and couldn't be seen from the road. I went up the long driveway and proceeded to do my look over the place. And there were three structures, the house, a garage and a large tool shed. I walked around the front of the house, which was completely boarded up with no means of seeing inside. I proceeded around to the far side towards the other buildings. And the shed was basically fallen completely down, but the garage it was mostly still completely up. I noticed around the side main door a lot of huge scratches, and the door was like half broken down, but still held shut by a padlock on one side, and the middle one up a hinge. The bottom part was forced inwards, and the door and clapboards around it 
or they were covered with these scratches. But not like scratches a dog would leave. These scratches, well, they were huge and parallel but spread apart, almost like fingernail scratches, and very deep, obviously put there with a lot of pressure. That's when I looked down and seen a huge paw prints, but not regular round paw prints, almost elongated a little bit. The area around this particular broken down door was covered with these paw prints. If I had to venture a guess at how wide they were, I would say at least five inches. I was wearing a heeled dress boots and when I put my foot over the paw print, I could see the print on either side of my foot. And I wear a size 10, so I don't have tiny feet by any means. I began to get very uneasy and that's, that's when I recalled noticing that all the sounds of the forest or they were gone, and it was dead silent. And then that is when I noticed that stench. Like a wet dog, urine, and feces. I mean, the whole area just smelled rotten. Like a swamp. Rot and decay. But this smell was strong and very putrid, and I got very uneasy. Like all of a sudden I knew I wasn't alone. And I decided I'd seen enough, and quickly headed back to my car. That is when I heard something in the bushes, and it sounded big. It was going through the trees very quickly and hard. I got back to my car and I got in and I locked the doors. And when I started my car and turned the lights on, that's, that's when I caught the eye shine in the trees ahead of me. But this eye shine was not at the level a dog's head to be at. It was a lot higher. I would say four or five feet up, maybe even a bit higher. I could not make out a shape as it was getting on towards dusk and so there were a lot of shadows in the trees but I thought I'd seen a large figure in there. I could not make out a shape as it was getting on towards dusk and I thought I'd seen a large figure in the trees but could not be sure. I started to freak out a little bit and decided it was time to go. So I backed around right into a wet marshy spot and kind of got my car stuck. I was more interested in watching this thing than where I was going, which well, I was a mistake. My attention quickly went back to the car as I tried to free myself from the mud. When I looked back to where this thing was, I was gone. The spot it was, I could see no further into the trees, so there was definitely something there, but I could not see exactly a shape more than just a large shadowy figure. After several seconds of rocking my car back and forth, I managed to get out and I left very quickly. I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life. Like I said, I did not clearly see what it was, but I just had this intense feeling of evil. Something bad was there. I returned to that spot about a year and a half after this incident and the place is gone. Someone bought the property and tore it down and cut down a lot of the trees. But to the best of my knowledge, nothing has been developed on there. And it's still just vacant land. I've not really told anyone of this and I don't want to be ridiculed or made fun of. A co-worker said it was probably a bear I'd seen but I know for a fact there were no bears this far south in Ontario unless it's in a zoo. I had long forgotten about this until I recently seen a video on YouTube about someone's encounter with something very similar to what I described. I handled the sale of some farmland on the nearby to the place I experienced this, Six Nations Indian Reservation, and the client was one of the few remaining pure blood Indians. I put him easily in his 80s, if not older. Now I asked him about odd happenings in the area, like strange animals in that area, and I sort of told him of my experience, not in detail, just that I was on that property. He responded with a question. You seen it, didn't you? He went on to say there are many things that are unknown to this world but wouldn't comment further about my experience. And he said there was a good reason a particular place has sat empty and unused for decades. I had the odd nightmare of that day for about a year afterwards and I'm still very hesitant to do surveys in areas like that. Wow, what an absolutely intriguing report. And since then, Nat Spy 1976 has updated 
nine days ago with two separate encounters on the same night. And so, let's get straight into that. After having my own encounter, reading about countless others, I've gained a new respect for these creatures. As I said in the account of my experience, I never clearly seen it, but it was definitely something there. Decades ago, my uncle and a cousin each had an encounter on the same night. This was my uncle's encounter and one of my third or fourth cousins, although I'd never spoken with my cousin about this. His account was only what my uncle had told me. Now this happened nearly 50 years ago, but my uncle still remembers it clearly. I'll provide a bit of info on the area and our family. We lived in a family farmhouse with my grandparents, the last house on a dead-end country road. The small community of about eight or nine homes was referred to by locals as Thames River Siding, but really it had no official name. That name derived from the close-by station sign of the CN Railroad. The road went out and met another road at the T intersection, and to the right went over the tracks and then down through a ravine and out to the main country road. And to the left, the road went through open fields for a mile or so, and then turned 90 degrees, and went over to the next secondary county road, where it ended again very near to another ravine on the left side. Now, our family had a band started by my grandfather. He, my mum, uncle and two cousins were in it. On this particular night, they had met for practice, which, by 11 or 11.30, was winding down. I had one cousin left, and the remaining cousin helped my uncle tear down and put away the equipment while my grandfather tended to the animals, which seemed to be very spooked and nervous. Which really wasn't out of the ordinary, as there was a pack of wild dogs that made their way through every so often for a few years back then. And so the cousin left and headed home. His way took him out to the left at the end of the road, and over the next intersection is where he had the first of two encounters that would have become known for a few days. My uncle left ten minutes or so afterwards and his way home took him to the right and over to the main county road. And this particular night was either a full moon or very nearly a full moon. As my uncle said, it was a very bright night. He crossed the tracks and went down through the ravine and as he approached the stop sign, something in the field to his right caught his eye. And it was something large and tall, standing sort of hunched forward and staring intently in his direction. And this happened just as he was on the brakes slowing down to a stop, but also starting to angle the car for the left-hand turn about to be made. His side of this thing went from glancing to his right to over his shoulder and entered a rear-view mirror as the car stopped. And he sat there staring for what seemed like hours, he said, but was only seconds. And then this thing broke into a sprint directly at the car. My uncle said it was like a trance of disbelievement, like his brain couldn't comprehend what his eyes were seeing. Now the field isn't overly large, but still will be four or five hundred yards between the tree line and the road, and this thing covered it fast. My uncle snapped out of his trance and peeled out of there as fast as he could, watching in the rearview mirror the whole time. And this thing was close enough to be illuminated by the towel lights, and it was reaching out for the car as he peeled out. He said it ran on two feet and not on all fours, or even partly on all fours. Two feet. It had dark coloured hair, either brown or black. It appeared to have a muzzle similar to a dog, and had pointed ears on top of its head, and the eyes, or they appeared to glow a dim yellowish orange. He said one strange thing was he felt as if it wasn't looking at the car, but it was looking at him in the car. And that was about as detailed as he could get, only seeing it briefly like that. Now he raced home and called back to the house and told them to lock the doors and stay inside. My grandfather asked why. My uncle said, just do it. I seen something in the field, but I'm not sure what. Just lock up to be safe. That was the last and only time he's seen anything like that. Now, a few days later, at the next band practice, my uncle and cousin were sitting outside having a smoke, 
and my uncle told him about what he saw, expecting to be made fun of or called crazy. But instead, my cousin said, I seen something on that night on my way home too. As he was approaching the stop, something ran across the road in front of him, making him hit the brakes and almost skid off the road. He said he'd only seen it for a split second, as it was moving, but from what he could see of it, it looked like a massive dog or wolf, but looked like it was upright on two legs. It could have been the way it seemed to bound or jump over the road. He more or less described the exact same thing my uncle had seen. Whatever it was, it covered a good two miles, which included navigating some dense wooded areas and a pretty steep-sided ravine in only a matter of ten minutes at the most. And so it was fast. There were reports of strange noises, like growling, howls or barks in the woods along the Thames River and around some of the farms in and around the time of these sightings. And he said there was some livestock found dead and partly eaten, but everyone tossed that up to the wild dogs that were around at that time. But my uncle knows that that was no dog that he'd seen. No one else has ever come forward having reported seeing anything. Regards, Nat. Thank you very much, Nat, for that uh, intriguing and uh, very, very credible report there. The fact that two of your family members were separate by a good 10 or 12 minutes, and they both report having seen the same thing. Absolutely chilling. Thank you so much for allowing me to narrate your experiences on the show. This next encounter was uh, posted by Firestormer252 over on Reddit. It's simply entitled, A Figure Behind a Tree. Let's get straight into that. A friend recommended this sub for me to tell my story as an experience with an unidentified person, looking thing. I'm sorry if this is boring to you, but it shipped me up for years. So, a bit of backstory. About five years ago, when I was 14 or 15, I would frequently walk home from school for a couple of friends for a wooded area which was on a steep hill. We had explored the area a decent amount as we had been walking that way since we were all 13. Next to the forest there was a field with a wire fence around two sides of it, blocking off the forest. The fence had a human sized hole in it which we explored a couple of months before which led through bushes to what we believed was an abandoned homeless persons camp, complete with a badly built shelter out of tarp and crates, a couple of plastic chairs and a small pit in the middle. Now we went there a couple of times to show people, it always stayed pretty much the same except the chairs would move positions every so often and sometimes be thrown into the bushes. We went here often but we never saw anyone and to get to our houses we would have to walk from the field up the steep hill to the forest to get to the top where there are houses. I'm sorry for all that backstory, but here's the encounter. It was late spring. Me and a couple of friends, let's call them M and L, were walking home after school, like normal. It was a pretty nice day, so we thought we'd explore the woods rather than heading straight home. We were exploring for a decent amount of time, like maybe an hour or so, and just walking through bushes to try and find other paths or open areas. We walked through thick bushes and discovered we had accidentally walked into the homeless person's camp area. We were all confused as we'd never walked in from this angle, only through the fence. Immediately, something felt off, like a kind of sinking feeling. L and M didn't have the same feeling, so I kind of brushed it off. L was tired from walking, so decided to sit on one of the plastic chairs and eat some food he'd brought earlier, whilst me and M just kind of walked about the camp seeing if anything had changed again. We walked into the cover bit and could smell something pretty grim but couldn't exactly figure out what it was. M, thinking it was a dead body, decided to go look further in whilst I went back out to talk to L, as I was still pretty freaked out. M was gone for a couple of minutes until he called us to come and see what he had found. And we refused so he came out annoyed and called us pussies pulling up his phone to show us a photo of a dead rat. And the rat looked rotten, torn apart, 
M said he found it right at the back in a corner. Either way, we found it creepy and decided to just leave. I wanted to go through the fence and walk around the forest, but the other two said it would take too long, and that we may as well just walk quickly up the hill and through the forest so they could get home. And that we may as well just quickly walk up the hill and then through the forest so they could just kind of get home. I decided to go with them, as I just didn't want to walk home alone. We went back the way we'd came with that feeling kind of dropping. Me and M were just joking around trying not to think about the rat and did I notice L kind of fell behind. As we were walking through, L kept saying he saw something, but we just kind of took the piss out of him saying he was seeing things. But he was very certain he saw something and started getting pretty distressed. I am joking shouted something along the lines of, if you're here to kill us, just do it already. My legs hurt. We had a decent laugh until L started having a full-on panic attack and began crying. We went over to make sure he was alright and that's, that's when I saw something a couple of meters away. An all-black figure behind the tree, but it wasn't a person in all-black or anything like that. It was dark, extremely dark. I could see its shape looking like an elongated person's shape and with fingers that were long and wide holding onto the tree. I thought it was a shadow or something, but I could see that it was 3D. And I stood staring for a couple of seconds, with it also not moving. I felt like a deer in the headlights until M started shouting at whatever it was. I still didn't move. M dragged me and L, with L bawling his eyes out. We got far enough away to the point where we just decided to turn and run. I couldn't really run much as I felt like all the energy had been drained from me. I turned back and the thing had barely moved, now leaning more out from the tree and with its long thin arm by its side. We kept going, now not really a run but more of an out of breath jog. We got to the road at the top of the hill and just kind of fell to the ground from exhaustion. Still, all looking at the forest. I think M started filming the forest shouting, but I can't remember what he said, but nothing really came after us. We went on home, making sure to stick to the main road. Even though we had school the next day, M and L decided to stay at my house to talk about what we saw. We even drew pictures of what we saw. We told my mum and she didn't exactly believe us, but said she should drop us to school and pick us up the next day to make us feel a bit better. We spoke about it with mates, but they just kind of blew us off as trying to make shit up. We looked through the video with them, but we couldn't really see anything. We would each claim to see it again, but could not really validate it, as it was never as clear as it was the first time. And seeing it from car windows when driving by, or whilst walking to the shop by the field after school. To this day, neither me or L have gone back to that forest especially after leaving school. I don't think M has gone back to the forest, but I haven't spoken to him since the end of high school, and so I don't know. But that long black figure always remains in my mind. It still shits me up today whenever I'm walking alone or in dark areas. I'm sorry if that's boring, but me and L talked about it recently, and I thought it was worth sharing. Regards, Fire Stormer. Two five two. Thank you ever so much, Fire, for uh, allowing me to narrate this on the show. Of course, if you do manage to uncover those videos or pictures, I'd love to take a look at them. This next encounter was posted by JP Jax nineteen ninety three over on Reddit. It's entitled "Bipedal Creature Encounter, Southeast Michigan, eighty minutes north." of Detroit in 2010. Let's get straight into that. Hey DMT, this happened around 2009 or 210. My girlfriend and I had spent the day together and my friend R was dating my girlfriend's best friend, M. And so all four of us were spending every day with each other. Me and R were sleeping at my house in my parents' RV so we could sneak out at night without getting caught. 
My girlfriend called me and told me that she had taken her mum's car and her and him were on their way to pick us up. At this point, it was probably around 2.30pm. So, to avoid any potential noise and waking my parents, we told the girls to pick us up down the road from my mum's. We live just outside of a very small town, down a dirt road surrounded by farm fields and dense woodlands. And our eyes started walking down the road. Eyes pitch dark out so we can barely see five feet in front of us before it turned to complete darkness. I should probably mention that I was born completely deaf in my right ear, so every time I was walking with someone, they were on my left side so I could hear them. As we were walking, we were well away from my house at this point and I looked to my right and just barely out of sight I saw something walking on the other side of the ditch line along the road in the same direction as us. I assumed it was a deer as that's the only animal in that area that would be large enough for what I saw. Now we're still walking and talking and I tried to focus more on what I was looking at and I could barely make out what looked like two long legs. They looked like the back legs of a long-haired deer and a tall, slender body. Well, that's all I needed to see. I jumped onto R and yelled, Dude, what the fuck is that fucking monster? And R pushed me off of him and yelled back at me, Get the fuck off me! And we continued walking as I tried to contain my fear. We get another two minutes down the road and R looks at me and says, Dude, I'm not going to lie. I saw it too. I took everything in me not to collapse on the ground in a ball of fear and cry. Before I could reply, the girls had turned around the corner onto my road and were finally there to pick us up. I don't know what it was that I saw that night. I haven't seen anything like it since. I lived on that road my entire life and have never had any experience like that. I've tried to find a cryptid or creature that looks similar, and the closest thing I've ever been able to find is the fawn from the movie Pan's Labyrinth. I have never seen that movie and due to that experience, I don't think I'd ever be able to watch it. Does anyone have any similar experiences? Regards, JP. Wow, guys and girls, that's it for this compilation. Got a few more in the bag and a few loose ends to tie up and then put together in another compilation. Of course, as ever, if you have any questions or any points that you want to put forward to each of our witnesses, please do comment below or chase up their link, which I'll leave in the description box below, as I'm sure there's lots of questions that have remained unanswered for all of these years. It's certainly nice to dust off the uh, true encounters side of the show. I'm looking forward to getting back into this and helping a few people as best I can and hopefully answer any questions that I may have. Of course, if you had an experience yourself, please do get in touch with myself with the usual email as on screen, which is dmt fear at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. As ever, guys and girls, please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. I hope everybody's well and happy and trying to keep fit and focused during these testing times. But above all, guys, remember, be safe, not sorry.